I'm going to launch our live stream here and get us introduced. So we'll be live in about five, four, three. Okay. All right, we've made it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's roundtable discussion panel. Uh, this is part of our Auto Shopper Experience series, one of several uh, auto retail related webcast programs that we run each month. I am Ryan Girardi. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us on this live discussion. Today is Thursday, November 7th. And today, what we're focusing on is the phone process, kind of two parts, the phone process and the inbound phone experience between auto shoppers and retailers. A call source who's on the call with us today uh, recently came out with an inbound phone experience study that we'll look at in the beginning um, and kind of set the stage of some of the, some of the findings that, that came out of that study. So Stephanie Robbins, uh, she's a director of strategic accounts with CallSource is on with us. We also have Jack Holcomb. He's general manager at New Smyrna, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Chevrolet. And then Sean Kieran from CRM Backstop. And Sean is a key training partner with Call Source. So I will real quick just say, hey guys, welcome to today's discussion. Thanks Thank for having us. Now for, for folks that might be new to, to our webcast programs, this is conducted as a, as a live webinar. And, uh, and if you're registered in here as an attendee, then you are able to participate in the Q&A. So at any time during today's session, which we'll keep to about 30 minutes, feel free to pose questions and then I'll field those questions and toss them in there during the conversation. This is streamed live on YouTube. So if you're subscribed to our channel and you're watching either the live session, there is a chat console there. I'll check in on that as often as I can. Uh, maybe you're watching the recording of this and you can use the comment section even after the fact and, and we'll still be able to uh, make you part of the conversation. It's recorded and featured on the Auto Converse podcast for uh, convenience of listening as well. So if you're not familiar with our podcast, uh, go ahead and search for Auto Converse when uh, on your preferred podcasting app. So what I'd like to do, I mentioned the study, but Sean, you and Jack have had uh, some extensive conversations. Uh, you work very closely with Call Source. So I think what'd be good is we know that incoming phone calls are one of the keys to success. So maybe you can kind of work with us here and Jack on, on what you guys think challenges are uh, both with handling calls and also scheduling them. You know, I think Ryan, if you, if you don't mind, um, just kind of as, as a segue into that, when call source produced this study, what was Interesting was not only the data between manufacturers as far as who you know has a little bit more of opportunity for improvement there, but as a dealer, it's very important because it identifies where are our internal opportunities inside of the store and where are some areas where we can capture some low-hanging fruit and bring a little bit more money out of uh, to the bottom line instead of having it spill. Um, I think Jack's probably an ideal person because he's experienced it firsthand, both in identifying the study and also looking at some of those challenges. Um, so Jack, what do, you think, uh, what do you think some of the challenges that you have seen inside of a store are? Well, I think, the, the, you know, for me, it, it, the, the calls coming in is, is handling them properly, um, you, you know, and properly is time. Uh, asking the right questions, staying on script, um, staying in control, and then, and then getting all of the, uh, the, the information from the customer, then getting off in a real time and actually giving the customer some, some value in the call. So when the customer calls, answer their questions, give them what they're looking for, um, and, then, and, and then give that, get off the phone call quick so we're not wasting their time. Uh, that's kind of where we'd struggle. Um, and uh, that's, that's, those are the things, the training that's helped us. Uh, and that's, you know, but they're unique to that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it seems simple. And then you listen to your phone calls and you're like, why did that just turn into a 17 minute phone call? So the, the, it's, it's uh, as you start to listen, the one thing I had to do is I had to, when I was putting this together is I had to do it myself. 
you know, I, I kind of went back through myself and put myself through training first. And those were the things that I did. So that's, uh, I think the commitment for me was me first, then my employees. Um, and that's where I'm at right now. It's interesting you say that because as we've seen various stores, various groups all over the country, what we've noticed is that it starts with actually paying attention to what's happening on the phone and being able to understand which calls to listen to, to hear, are we doing a good job or are we not? And then from there, once we establish that process, the challenge has always been, how do we hold people accountable to the process that we set out? Like who's going to get involved in the store to keep that person on track when they're supposed to do their work? How am I going to give them an keeps them focused? So I think, uh, and on that, Jack, what's great about it is I think you all have done a great job of, of how do you solve that challenge, right? How do you, how do you deal with the accountability and, uh, and also just ongoing training so that they continue to get information that's relevant. Well, I, I think I searched for it. I mean, I think the, the conversations that we had, I don't, I don't think it was, I don't, I don't know that I was necessarily comfortable. We had on-site training. We, we flew, uh, we had an install, we came out, we, we talked. Um, but I, I think where for me is, is where you're kind of searching for the right fit is before you can issue accountability, you've got to actually get the people prepared. I mean, it's, I'm going to hold you accountable, but I'm not going to train you is, or I'm not going to prepare you is, is kind of backwards. So before I started to hand out accountability, I needed to hand out skill. And that was for me as, as I listened to the phone calls, I'm like, I just, I hadn't prepared the people. So I had to prepare them before I could hand out the accountability. And that's kind of had to where I had to take a step back um, and, and say, okay, let me, let me get these folks trained, but then what's the investment. And then, and that's where we kind of searched and, um, being a part of it. Uh, I think I'm very comfortable where we're at now. Uh, and that's where, you know, the phone calls coming in with the trainer, the one-on-ones, the investments, very fair. Um, and I, and I think my employees, you know, they know they're, I'm in, they see me in the email threads. I ask them about it, um, you know, after, after the, the comments come back from the trainer, I actually communicate with the trainer. It doesn't take me a lot of time. I'd, I'd say probably the, my investment time-wise is no more than 20 to 30 minutes um, when I'm dealing with the trainer, reading the email, talking to the employees. It's not a, not a lot of time there. Um, but I think the employees from the investment side and the, my time side, they, they, they start to see value there. And I think that's, you know, they, they, you get something for that. So for me, I think that's important. I've seen it in the comments and I've seen it from the feedback from the employees. So I, I think those things are important. And then you start to see the effort, the actual effort in the, you just hear it in the phones. If you're actually reviewing the calls, you'll, you'll hear it. You'll see it. It's not a, it's a, it's a thing you hear. It's not something you go and, and then your numbers will start to get better. So those are the things for me, and we're nowhere near that. We still have issues and we still have problems and we're by no means, if everybody wants to pick up the phone and call here and ask to set an oil point, you know I mean? You can still pick us apart, but we're getting better. And that's the one thing that we're working on. Yeah, I would agree. Um, real quick, I'm sorry, I wanna, I wanna turn to you, Stephanie, but I wanna make sure Sean, uh, I asked him to turn off his video because it was, because of bandwidth this. So Sean, you're still with us and we can hear you, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. You sound great now. Um, go ahead, Stephanie. I, I, sorry. I wanted had to interrupt there. No, that's okay. I think everything Jack's hitting on, we believe at call source that it's a work in progress, right? And so the first step is all the, is always the awareness, right? And so once you're aware of, you know, things that need to happen on the phone, then you can start making changes to get to where you want to go. So I'm glad to see that you are in the midst of that process. You know, when we started looking at, the phone experience study, we wanted to find some commonalities that we could use across dealerships and across brands that we felt would help them if they focused in on three key areas that could help them just start improving the process at the store. Um, so we kind of stepped back and we looked at, you know, three areas. One, are they answering the phone? Two, are they connecting that shopper to the right person in the right department? And three, are they setting hard appointments that's going to drive that consumer into the store? 
And by taking those three, um, those three, you know, data points, we could then average them out, um, consolidate them by brand, and then be able to see across the board where we could help OEMs and, and their dealers ultimately succeed in the long term. So that's, you know, Jack, in working with you, I think we were kind of installing first the awareness piece and then moving towards our, our you know, whole mission in life, which is to improve phone experience through our own set closed product set and bringing in Sean and his team to help the dealers um, kind of take it to the next level. Right. I, I, would, I would agree with that. I would, I would agree with that. And, that's, and, like, and then you just build off that. But you, you have to start somewhere. And then you'll you'll identify new issues. I, I think, and that's kind of where you know. I think if you would use the example, and I, I don't, we don't have it, but if you would show the dialogue back and forth between the trainers and you know each operator when they when the comments I get back, um, you know, say Mary Beth and then Brittany, and then it's the one on one with this is what we reviewed this week. It, this is the issues that person's having or the gains. It's that one-on-one -on -one individual. Every person has different issues. So for me, it's not a, it's an a la carte per employee. It's not a, you know, uh, everybody has different issues. Well, someone's really good at getting that person, um, that appointment set, getting through the, the script and getting off the phone. The other person can't get started. The other, you know, so, so that trainer has the, ability to work each one of those unique problems um, with each person and then give me the information back. And then I have the ability to go, you know, talk to the employees and say, how's it going? The feedback from the employees is it's not threatening. Um, it's not overwhelming. And it's, it's actually, um, it's easy to understand. So it's not, you know, that's the part. And they're actually doing it. Hey, Jack. Them. Yeah. I think it's, uh, something to clarify is that uh we went about teaching and training from a different perspective in this process and what we decided was that the challenge in having a monthly or a set quarterly training is that by the time you come back out they forgotten everything that you taught them and it seems that management in the store is so busy and has so many hats to wear that they simply don't have the time to go in and have a weekly training session with each individual employee. And so what we did different is we've taken every employee as an individual and scheduled a one-on-one -on -one 15 minute training session where we're going to look at something that happened well, look at something that was a challenge for them and then help them come up with an answer to their as opposed to trying to hit it with a shot. And I really, thanks to the study, we're able to identify where the It sounds amazing. It's like a movie <laughs> in slow motion. Yeah, it's funny how that slows down. Sean, <laughs> your audio cut out. I'm actually, uh, is and then dive a little deeper and then say okay with every individual employee that challenges you nobody has how do they transact it but by having maybe we can kind of hone in a little bit jack and and kind of you something you said earlier to me kind of resonated with me right once you identified there was a problem it was how do I identify, you know, how much this is going to cost me? And you said, you know, you know, it was a reasonable investment for in continuous training that has been the key to success at this point. Are there any other things that you would kind of add um, to continue well, kind of the evolution? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, the other part of it is, is that as, as time goes on, like anything else, um, you know, you lose, you, you have to make the investment whether you're in or you're out. You know, it's kind of like your health. If you want to stay healthy, you don't go get healthy, then stop training. If you want to be good at these skills, you got to stay committed. So I have other training that I committed to. I started some other things in the store about two years ago. I just made, I built two brand new dealerships. So I built both stores. I have all new technology. Um, I want to go faster. I want to be more transparent with my customers. 
Um, I want things to be easier for the customers and the employees. I thought the facilities, the technology, we just made it tough. I, the, the, the industry made it tough from the facilities, the technology on both the employee and the customer. And designing both my stores and buying the technology, as I really evaluated a lot of things, I said, hey, you know, one of the things I've got to reevaluate is my commitment to training dollars um, within reason. And, and that's kind of where, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, you start talking, when you start building dealerships, you're talking millions of dollars. And then we start overlooking thousands of dollars to train the people to come in to use the stuff. So, but I, it's, there comes a point where you have to be, you got to adhere to budgets. So what I started doing is looking at my advertising budget, my vendor list. And I had a lot of dead money in my, and I can you know, call it spray and pray and, and kind of really underperforming kind of just things that were left in the past that I stood for dollar for dollar. What I did is I started replacing underperforming vendors and underperforming marketing dollars with training dollars. So I never added any money. I just replaced money that I thought was not performing to the standard that I wanted. What's happened is I've gone up. My sales have gone up, my performance in different levels, everything that I have in my store is measured from my parts department to my service department. There's nothing that any employee has now from operators to every operator comes in, they get appointments, they get, everybody is on a measurable, just like my front of the house is. So there's nothing, there's no employee in the store that doesn't have some sort of um, uh, measurable attached to them. Now, if I'm gonna do that, I gotta train them. And I trained all my salespeople, and I trained all my finance managers, and I trained all my sales managers. So I had to do that for the rest of the team. The operators funnel all that business to those folks. They were the ones that got left behind. So it was just trying to find that, 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 and for me, it was, it was coming to you guys and we've worked through it. Now, what I like is the flexibility. The problems change when I have recalls, when I have, um, you know, just different issues that pop up, we can change next week to a problem I might hear today. And I can call Frankie or I can call my, my trainer and that's or just names for Frankie. So I call her. <laughs> I say, hey, I want to, or I email or in our group email and say, hey, I want to work on this. And just like that, I'm now correcting to a problem I might hear in my deal saver alerts. So that's the part I like about it is I don't have to wait. It's not a hard correction. It's not a big steer issue. It's an immediate correction. And then I can move on to the rest of the stuff I have and things I need to do to operate my stores. And I know that problem's being addressed immediately. So those are the things that I like about it is it allows me to continue on to do what I need to do, but I'm fixing my problem. So, so that's what I like. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just at a um, conference a few weeks ago and one of the panelists said, you know, dealers need to stop focusing on generating more leads and start focusing on cultivating the leads that they are already receiving. Yeah. And so it's interesting that you said that you moved some money around from the advertising side to, you know, support kind of this training and, you know, process problem that you were seeing in the dealership. And ultimately what I heard you say is you kind of have grown your sales and overall um, numbers within the store just by making small switches in your budget um, to do better hey, with the leads. Yeah. So it seems to me that, you know, one of the biggest challenges we always have with paying for training is that it's an enormous expense, right? But the thing is, is that if we can do it remote and we can have it live one-on-one -on -one every week, not only does it cost less, but it's simply significantly more effective with each person, right? And so you're not trying to shave out thousands of dollars. You're shaving out small amounts for the people that need it most. And I think that's part of, partially why it's effective, don't you think? Agreed. Well, and Stephanie, I'd even go, I'd even take that one step further. The, the night, like I, I would sit here now and, and say, because I've got two different training I've, I've gone from, an, uh, from my I had service training and I've had phone training. So I've, I've with my fixed operations and, and I've had anywhere from 10,000 a month to $200 per or whatever the number is per employee. So there's a, that's a big variance. That's a, com a commitment, right? Uh, from one, from one level to the other. So I've gone from install month to month to month to quarterly maintenance. Okay. And what I would tell you is that what I'm going to, what I would do with you guys is I would start to set standards on measurables. So once we have an employee that holds a standard that maybe we don't do that person each week, if they're holding that standard 
and say, okay, instead of every week, we're going to hold them maybe once a month. Now that investment isn't as great. Now, if the other employee is not holding that standard, correct, then maybe that's a, a weekly investment. And those are things that you, both parties win, the, that you continue the, the relationship and you're not, you know, spending money in that person that's, you're incentivizing the, the employee if they don't really want to do the whole bunch of training to keep their numbers up, right? Right. And you're and you're incentivizing that everybody wins a little bit by better numbers, um, right. and you keep the relationship going longer because the, the the training stays in the house where we we don't have that break all the time. Like oh I got it we figured it out we figured it out until all of a sudden eighteen months later we look over there and there's new people sitting there that weren't there that have not been through the training and we call you back and go hey Stephanie can we start over again? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, I was going to say. We should never start over again. We should just get you to continue. Keep it going. I, I have standards, of, and, that, and then that's the things that we kind of build on. I've experienced that so many times with different dealers, different OEMs, where they feel like they've solved their problem, so they cancel the training, and then two months later, they're right back to where they started, you know, at the beginning, and you know, from it's the amazing. Dealer, from the dealer, is the, in, the investment at the beginning and the investment when you've got the install complete, the, 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 I get the I get the understanding. You know, you always got to play devil's advocate. There is a different value in our mind. That's just the way we work. But now that I've gone through training, and which I've never done, I've been doing this almost thirty years. And what I would tell you is, now I found a way to continue training from install to maintenance, and that's the difference because I don't have a lot of turnover at my store. So there, there's always going to be. Um, you know, it, it, you're going to have it, but I don't have a lot of it. I've got a lot of 15 year employees here. I've got some 20 year employees, but I have some turnover and those people are going to need to be trained. So if you have a, if you have an employee that's just kicking butt, I'm not going to go spend $200 a week. If they're you know 85% appointment ratio, they're ripping and roaring on the scripts and they're doing all the wonderful things. That's not where my investment needs to be, but I do all of a sudden have a little turnover and someone comes in, that's where the investment needs to be. And that's where the partnership has worked with, you know, I started with you guys and we did fly somebody in here and they sat here and they worked with my sales team and they did work with my operators and they did work with my BDC and we've worked it down to this now. So there is somewhere between install and then that transition to a maintenance program once the install is complete. So that's the, that's how you continue. And I think that's, that's the, the, the relationship from the beginning to the end is how you got to figure out how to go from install money to maintenance money. I'm kind of curious. Well, Jack, you I may... think, Go ahead. I oh, think a lot of that is that with, um, when you look at most stores, most stores have a new employee coming in. You've got at least one a month. Yeah, absolutely. You've got, you've got an addition of one new employee a month. You've got helping people feel better about whatever the objection they heard on the phone this week was that they didn't have an answer for. And so really, not only did it keep the cash down, but also, if every week you know that you've got a set number of live one-on-one -on -one trainings, like you said, you can plug in the people that need to work and they could do it in a way where they always feel like they're being built as opposed to in public, because when they do it in a group, they feel like they're being put down. 100%. And one of the funny things about today's society is that they don't, they don't want to be in a place. They don't want to be uncomfortable in public. They yeah. want to be uncomfortable in private where they can build up their strength, build up their confidence and then get back out in public once they practiced a little bit, don't you think? No, hundred percent. And, and that's the thing that, like I said, there's, there's a lot of wasted money in hotel rooms and, 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 and airplane tickets. And, and for me, this is the part about what you guys are doing that makes sense here for me, that I would rather have you three weeks a month or four weeks a month or two weeks a month than basically four days a month. I think it's a more valuable relationship to have you 26 weeks a year than it has, is to have you, you know, an install and then whatever. So I just think there's, and again, we're, we've worked through that. I don't know when we did our first week, guys. It's been a while, um, but we're still together. So, uh, and, we're, and it's changed from the beginning to where we're at now. I know that we're getting better. I know my employees see value in it. And I don't write checks. Um, I don't continue writing checks to things I don't see value with. So, you know, I just said I had some vendors and stuff that I had on the books, but I'm just saying that, that I see value in what we're doing. My employees are getting better and we're unraveling some things of this, this rat's nest that I call my phones 
of, hmm. of, of working through problems. And one of it, you know, like one of the things we, ch I'll give you for instance, the one thing we changed was the status calls. We changed uh, the, the way we did the script. Your script was a little different. I said, I want to work on, um, I want to change the first question to status, an appointment. Are you calling on an appointment or a status? Because I want to get my stat, technology should eliminate that status call. If we, the operators can't do the work of the advisors. So we need to find out how to eliminate the status call. And lo and behold, when we start asking that status question, I get those status calls. We look into them, we find out what the problem is. We start working on the problem. That's a question. That's a script adjustment. And that's training that we did with you guys to solve a problem. And then we go back, we look in our CRM and we start to find out why we're not getting, you know, those, that's working with your training team. That's really solving problems other than just reviewing scripts and listening to phone calls. That's, that's working through a problem. That's, that's really good info, uh, Jack, that you were able to, to uh, articulate that. Uh, folks, we we're coming down the last couple of minutes here. Stephanie, I know you had, you were about to chime in. I just wanted to prompt the audience. I had one question come in, which I'll throw out after you talk, Stephanie, but uh, kind of last call here for any, uh, any uh, questions from those that are attending. So Stephanie, I know you're about to chime in. Do you remember what your thought was? Um, I mean, I was, but I don't know if we have time. I was just curious um, because Jack said he's been in the business for 30 years and he really hadn't put a lot of emphasis on phone training, if I heard that correctly. And, and my question is, well, if phones are driving the most leads into the dealership, why aren't dealers investing in getting better on the phone? Well, I mean, you know, I, again, it's just been, we, you know, create the biggest amount of, you know, it's been weekends, I guess, just bring as much as you can, bring as much as you can. Um, and, and just close, 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 you know, I mean, right. just, uh, controlled chaos. Um, <laughs> And that's uh, big days, big days. Um, you know, everything I do now has a data point attached to it. I mean, there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I, again, like I said, I've, I've literally retrained myself in the last 24 months. There's nothing that I don't do that doesn't have a data point attached to it. Um, so uh, it's amazing what the results have been. Um, so I would say, you know, for me, it was just going back and, and uh, the, 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 how we're communicating with our customers has changed. It's yeah. Really, um, and you know, you, you stop and think about what the, you know, how, how many, you know, when it gets down to the, you know, we talk about the funnel and when it gets down to the end, when that customer's calling, they're, they're, they're pretty much done. You know, it's one or two places. You don't get a second chance with these folks. You better, ha you better be spot on um, when you pick that phone up. Um, so you don't, and that's, you know, like I said, the deal saver alert, all the things that come with that uh, second chances that are, that are very important to not screw up. So that's why I did that. Can you speak, this is actually just came in. Let me go back to the first question that had come up, Jack, which was, uh, Stephanie, when you were talking about the study, you had mentioned the three metrics, the right. answer rate, the appointment set rate. Uh, and I think, uh, I don't even remember what the third connectivity one score. Okay, Jack, are those in line with you? Say you, you know everything's a data point for you. Uh, are those is that consistent with how you uh, identify and measure on your side those three points? Yeah, I mean, well, I can tell you right now. I just had a conversation. I'm not going to give you which store I did it with, but I just had two managers in my in my office from two different stores explaining to one that his his. Um, closing percentage on the phones was 10 points lower than the other ones. And he had 16 more phone ups last month than the other store. And how, how do how do you think that, you know, and you know, I went through the dollars per, you know, the PVR and what that was and how many dollars it was down to dealer fees and everything. And I, I, I showed him that number, what that, that, that 10 points of closing percentage on those extra 16 um, uh, phone ups, you know, and again, was 200, phone ups, I think this was the number, 216 phone ups, you know, 10 points, you start looking at that number, it's a pretty significant number, 23, 2400 bucks a copy, throw a dealer fee in there. That's a, that's a number and then annualize it, you know, and I want them to look at that number. So yeah, when you start looking at it, th those are the things I look at and these guys see it every day. And 
So yeah, when you say, does it make a difference? Yeah, it makes a difference. 10 points of closing percentage on a phone ups is huge. Every day I go home before my guys go to bed, I, before I, go, I get my closing percentages on my phones, my internets and everything. So it's, yeah, it's, it's important. And Ryan, I'll just piggyback on that. I think from a call source perspective, what we hone in at the dealership is really to pay attention to the appointment set rate. On average, dealerships are only setting 15% of their sales prospects to a hard appointment. That's 85% of missed opportunities that dealer could have had if he would have just asked for the, I like to call it the sale, but asked for the appointment. And that's what Jack is talking about when he talks about those deal saver alerts. He gets alerted every single time his people don't take it to the, to the level of asking for appointments. So him and his staff can follow back up with that customer and hopefully get them in the store because it's like the 50, 50, like, 50% of the calls should set an appointment. 50% of the appointments should close if they, or should show up at the dealership. And then 50% of the people that show at the dealership should close. And so that's kind of what I've always used in the industry. If I'm wrong, Jack, you correct me. Um, so it's so important to get those people setting hard appointments and getting them in the store. And then Jack can measure, are they closing or not? Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely. Like I said, it's everybody... Um, you know, I, it's funny because I have, I, you know, when my, when my BDC rep for my service department text me this weekend, she set 16 appointments on Saturday in, you know, just outgoing phone calls. It's everybody has a number. And I text her on at the annualized number on those 16 phone calls with her 82% show ratio that she has of the outgoing BDC phone calls that we have in the service department is $282,000 annualized. And I said, I kept screenshot or, you know, the calculator on your phone. I said, you know what that number is? She goes, my pay raise? I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I knew she was going to say that. I, <laughs> said, that. I go, that's, that's your appointments annualized if they have your 82% show ratio. Yeah. That's the way I want my employees to think. And that's yeah. it's getting that mindset to change, not only to a monthly, but to an annualized number mm. because the numbers are that big. Well, we're out of time, folks. Sean, if you wanted to maybe put the icing on the cake here, uh, the mic is yours. Um, I guess I guess it makes me think that we all need to look at what happens on those incoming phone calls and find an answer. And the answer is, what's, what is the most cost-effective way to continually train our employees? and give them what they need on an individual basis so that I can build the person and stop the turnover. And I mean, when it comes to a training program at $200 a week per employee, I don't know if you're going to find a better fit than that. And if a dealer like Jack who had never really prescribed to a phone training program before and has always been successful is seeing that kind of lift, I would hope that that difference can happen at a lot of other stores as well. And Ryan, I have one thing. I was just jotting down notes as we were listening and how I would want to summarize to a dealer that maybe isn't currently, you know, tracking their phone calls. And I was like thinking of five, you know, kind of ideas. First of all, to the dealers out there, if you're not listening to your phone calls today, you need to start, right? Awareness is key. You need to know how your people are handling your customers on the phone. If you feel like they need help, Pick a partner that is committed and flexible to your success, making sure that you're first and that we're following the process that you need based on your needs. And then three, make sure you're setting the baseline based on the key metrics. Um, I like the, you know, the three that we set up in our study, which was answer rate, connectivity score, and appointment set. And when I say appointment set, I mean hard appointments, not soft appointments. Um, four is all about having a champion in the store. So Jack is a great champion continuing to push the uh, mission when the trainers aren't in store or on the phone with the, um, the sales reps. And last is just measure, measure, measure to make sure that you are being effective in, in affecting change in the store. I, I would say, you know, for me, the, the one thing, if I could give advice to, to, to people out there, I, like I said, I've been at this for two years, you know, again, five years building the, the two stores and retraining myself is be patient uh, you know, we're, don't try to do too much too quick because you'll just overrun your employees. You'll burn them out and you'll, and you'll, and you'll run them out. And that's for me, 
is is it's been hard because you, you you're like why are we pick you know why are we not picking this up quicker uh it's because we you know we it t- takes time to get this stuff in it's just like reps and anything that we do I, you know sports is familiar with me um and it's like a throwing motion getting a throwing motion down or a golf swing down you don't get to go to the range twice and have a great golf game and so for me what i've done is i just like i said i I, I pick and choose my battles and I, it's one thing at a time, get that down and then move on to the next thing. And then it's, you know, I don't know that we're all built that way, but I've, uh, I, I've, I've been patient and the results have been good. It's just a little slower than I'd probably prefer to go. But now that I'm two years into it, I've, I've, I'm happy with looking back, uh, but it's been a journey. Well, thank you, Jack. Yeah, thank you, everybody. We're going to go ahead and call this a wrap. And what I'm going to do is just just so everyone knows what to expect, let me uh, reshare my screen here for you folks. If you are subscribed to autoconverse.com, uh, you'll get email alerts every time we uh, put announcements up like today's panel discussion. This is part of the Auto Shopper Experience Roundtable panel discussion, uh, which you can find under the uh, webcast section on our website. Here's where we list what we're talking about. There's links to the previously recorded sessions. If you want to participate in the live webinar, go ahead and get yourself registered. Once you're registered with the series, you are always registered unless you uh, cancel your subscription to it. And what will happen is every month when we plan these out, you'll get an email with a link uh, to your access here on Zoom. Uh, There is a calendar of programming up here so you can see all the different events that we have. We'll be back next month, I think December... Uh, probably, probably as early as December 3rd uh, for another session of the Auto Shopper Experience. Thank you guys for taking the time. Thank you folks for joining us. And uh, we're going to go ahead and shut this down. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone.